So, how has the morning gone so far? Don't even don't even worry about the camera. Just drive. We'll just have a discussion. Uh, the morning has been good. It's been addressing issues that I've known have been there, but have not had as much uh, success in getting rid of. So a lot of digging into things I've been aware of, but have not been solving yet. Excellent. But there's, there's, way, there's many, many, many things that will have a much greater impact on the quality of your sound that you can work on, right? Examples include proper calibration of your drone reads, right? Such that like the read is super solid, super stable, and you're able to like control that so you get a nice consistent sound, good calibration. Uh, a really well-tuned drone is like, really important as well. You get that added resonance from that. Uh, what type of bag you play has a big impact on the quality of tone that your drones will produce. The type of tie-in, right, uh, that you use to tie your stock into the bag plays a huge role in the quality of tone that your drones can produce, right? And then, you know, so when it comes to talking about one of two resonating chambers on the bass drone, I would much rather just know for sure it's going to start right than, than talk about that 0.001% of <coughs> added quality of tone you might get. You know what I mean? So do you have any of the science behind the tie-in method making a difference? Because I, I fully believe that. And it's definitely true. I insist, you know, especially in the grade two, that bags are tied in. There's no rubber grommets. Right. I've heard other people be very dismissive of that. It's about an inch wrapped around the bottom of the drone and it's going like this. What do you think happens to the... Yeah, the wood's it's not going to move. It's dampening. And it's going to dampen the sound. Yeah, it changes the resonant frequency. That's right. Grommets are super handy, especially for people who don't feel comfortable tying in a pipe bag. Uh, but you're doing this to your yeah. sound potential. That's never the resonant chamber on your bass drum. <laughs> that's going to hold you back as a band, right? And it's never and it's never light and shade. We see that on the score sheets a lot. Like what does it say on the band score sheets? Like um, you know, rushing off beat 4 in the stress bass. That's always a great one. Or like lacking light and shade in the plan, right? Even though it says that on the sheet, that is not what's holding you back as a group <coughs> when you see stuff like that. Or when you see stuff like D's are out of tune, right? It says that on the sheet, but that's not the issue. Let me explain. Let's go with the D's first, right? If the D's are out of tune, especially given that the people tuning up this particular band are very skilled at tuning, what's the real issue at play here? Why are the D's out of tune? Exactly. Um, and so to spend a whole bunch of time at practice working on getting the tuning better, big, colossal misuse of time, right? What really needs to happen? Manometers. What's that? Manometers, not bad, it's good attempt. But like, you don't need the manometers. The manometers could be a useful tool, but you need to develop every individual's ability to produce good, solid intonation. Um, that is the root of the problem. And that's a simple thing, it's a very simple concept, which is, is every individual blowing perfectly steady on their instrument. Preferably at the best, you know, at the point where the tone is the best. That's really the thing that's holding you back. It's not the D's. We learned this in Orin Moore the hard way uh, for ages and ages and ages and ages. <coughs> All right, so it's time for the annual edition of How Steady Can You Blow? <laughs> Go ahead, face the thing here. That's so, how we find the sweet spots? Anybody remember? You guys look like you remember. I know you know, so I'm not going to call on that. G, grace notes on low G. Is your bag here? 
Okay. So if you corked it up right now, it would hold air for 30 seconds and not lose any air? You sure about that? Maybe. <laughs> I'm so, pretty sure. But see, if you're not 100% sure, you're putting the band's awesomeness at risk. Agreed? Right. Same with the joints, right? And same with the reed seats, and definitely with calibration. Like you're calibrated? <coughs> so fire up, let's, let's make sure you're calibrated. Base me. Base me, go the If you don't calibrate, that's where you're going to lose the most air. Well, if your bag's not holding air, you're going to lose a lot of air. That is the thing you do before you even get your pipes out of the box. So, Jimmy, what are your biggest takeaways from today's session? Uh, I've got to make my blowing uh, a lot less terrible, so that's good. It's not terrible right now, but there's definite room for improvement there, right? Yeah, that's, that's one way to put it. <laughs> so, you've got to play a little bit every day with a special focus on intonation because your finger work is um, pretty good, right? Yeah. Pretty good. That was one heck of a clip right there. Bye, Jimmy. Bye. Say bye to the vlog. Bye bye. So the varsity. Okay, I have been told we have to have a frosted orange at the varsity. Yes. So we're doing one last minute stop before the airport. I've heard this is good. This better be good. Yeah, it's, it's totally good. You need to try the sweet potato pie. I'm not doing that. After much debate, it is like a creamsicle milkshake, aka delicious. So, very successful workshop, I think, with the band. I think they've got all the right things happening, and it's just about working on, as we were talking about yesterday, working on moving the needle as much as they possibly can on simple things during the off-season to be successful. And so, uh, yeah, I had a total blast. I need to get on this airplane and, like, fall asleep, because I am pooped. So uh, that does it for today's episode.